Hello and welcome back to Myth 201. This is Dr. Ben. And for this lecture, we're going to be discussing Poseidon. In many ways, Poseidon becomes a deity closely associated with Nostoi or returns home. As the god of the Mediterranean, the main highway of the ancient world, he can greatly affect those or who gets to return home and who doesn't. He's especially prominent in Homer's Odyssey, where it's his revenge against Odysseus that keeps the hero from home for 10 years. We will discuss more of that over the course of this lecture, so let's begin. Poseidon, whose Roman name is Neptune, is the son of Kronos and Rhea, Zeus's older brother and god of the sea. And by the sea, I mean the Mediterranean and Aegean seas. Deep under the Aegean Sea, he sets up his golden palace, where he rules with his wife, Amphitre. At the same time, and unlike we will see with Hades, he has a seat on Olympus with the other Olympians. He is second in power to Zeus alone. Besides, he's extremely loyal to his brother, although he does attempt one time to overthrow him with Hera and Athena, but that's neither here nor there. Poseidon carries the trident, which is a three-pronged spear, which he holds in almost all of his representations, which is made for him by the Cyclopes, just as Zeus's lightning bolt, just as Zeus has his lightning bolt, Poseidon's trident has power over the elements, namely earthquakes, and by virtue of this, large sea storms. He is also the father of horses, which he created to de impress Demeter, who is unimpressed and otherwise preoccupied. We will see later that he is not only the father of horses, but, but of the Pegasus, a winged and flying horse. In Homeric Hymn 22, the poet sings to Poseidon and tells us about several of these real, these real world powers. It reads, and Poseidon, the great, or about Poseidon, the great god first I sing, mover of the earth and the barren sea, marine god who possesses Helicon and born again. In two parts, earth shaker, the gods assigned you your privilege to be a tamer of horses and savior of ships. I salute you, Poseidon, Earth Rider, Sable Hair. Keep your heart well disposed, blessed one, and assist those at sea. Poseidon is especially important in his role as the god of the sea to sailors and merchants. These would often pray to Poseidon before their journeys because it was he, and he alone, who could guarantee safe passage on the sea. You would think, especially in Greece, where the, the most major city states rely on the sea for one thing or another, um, they would be beating down beside this door for patronage. However, this is not the case. In fact, Poseidon on two separate occasions competes for the patronage of a city state. We've already discussed his failed attempt to win over the people of Athens with his offering of horses and the saltwater spring. Athens, of course, would choose Athena and her olive branch. In many ways, this is a peculiar choice, is it not? Athens, who had come to be the most dominating navies in the entire Mediterranean, and most certainly the most in the Aegean, would choose this goddess of warfare and wisdom over the ocean their ships would be sailing on. This, of course, is to not to say that the Athenians didn't revere Poseidon. Here we have the Temple of Poseidon, or at least what remains of it in Sunion, on the southeast, on the southern tip of Attica. So here. <clears throat> this temple overlooks the sea, and its position overlooking the sea would mean that any ship sailing from Piraeus, which is Athens' port, would certainly see it 
as they were to sail east. This temple, in fact, is begun by the Athenians the same year as the Parthenon. Poseidon also attempts to get the patronage of another city, Argos. And while he does not involve, while this doesn't involve the giving of gifts, the choice of Hera has disastrous consequences for Argos. In the story, Inakos is a river that runs through Argos. In other variations, Inakos is the king of the land. This river, along with the rivers um, Kephisos and Asterion, are asked to judge the contest between Hera and Poseidon, and they choose Hera. As a result, Poseidon is said to have dried up all three rivers, so the only water that reaches Argos is rainwater. The actual city of Argos to this day is fairly dry and often has struggles with water. Again, the real world explanation made through myth. Poseidon is said to have many children, many of whom we have already seen briefly and others we will eventually see. The first of these is the winged horse Pegasus. As we saw in the lecture on Athena, Poseidon corners and rapes Medusa in one of Athena's temples. Athena, angry as she is, changes Medusa into a gorgon. And Medusa is also impregnated by Poseidon. Later, after Pericles kills Medusa and chops off her head, Pegasus is born. He would aid um, Perseus um, in freeing Andromeda and would also factor um, into a later myth with his half-brother Bellerophon. Next, we have Triton. If any of you are familiar with Disney's The Little Mermaid, then we have encountered Triton, you know, and we are the daughters of Triton, great father who loves us and trained us well. Um, all right, so no more singing for me. Um, but as shown here, Triton is a merman. Ha this is actually a Triton wrestling Her Hercules. He's a half man, half fish, born from Poseidon and Amphitre. He rules under the sea. Under the sea. Wait, sorry, I don't promise I would do that again. Um, I swear this time I'm done. But we do see um, Triton um, as this ruler. So if we think about this idea of generational change, um, Triton does become a king under the sea. Next, we have Atlas, not to be confused with the Titan Atlas, who would hold up the earth on his shoulders. This Atlas is the first king of the mythical land of Atlantis, <clears throat> who we are told about, or which we are told about um, by Socrates, or really Plato. Um, and which is a huge part of modern versions of many Greek myths. And the fascination of many children all over the world And maybe some adults do. Okay. Next, we have the hunter Orion, born from Poseidon and Urale. Um, Orion, or Urale, who herself is the daughter of King Minos of Crete. There are several stories surrounding Orion. The one I find most interesting is that he was often found in the company of Artemis and Apollo. 
Artemis even falls in love with Orion. You know, maybe she can be affected by Aphrodite after all and intends to marry him. Apollo gets jealous and kills Orion. Then, to prove a point to Artemis, bets her that she can't, can't hit a target far out on the horizon. Which, of course, she does. Only to find that it is Orion's head. In other stories, Orion is made into a constellation after attempting to kill seven minor deity sisters. Next, the hero Theseus. Again, we have him already in our discussion of Artemis, and I will have a lot more to say about him later in the semester. We'll have a, we'll have a longer discussion on just him. But for now, you should know that Theseus is an Athenian hero um, who is sent to Crete to satisfy the Minotaur, but kills it instead and helps with the help of two sisters, Ariadne and Phaedra, who we've seen it was Phaedra. He eventually ditches Ariadne, who go on to marry Dionysus, and marries Phaedra again, who we saw in the Artemis lecture. Next, Bellerophon, the greatest of the Corinthian heroes. Bellerophon is a man of virtue and courage. He's the grandson of Sisyphus and Merope and the son of Glaucus, king of Corinth, in some versions of the myth, but in others of this, um, he is the son of Poseidon. And that's why I include him here on this list. Bellerophon is forced to leave Corinth after accidentally killing a man and goes and stays with Proetus, the king of Tyrans, whose wife falls in love with Bellerophon. Bellerophon spurns her advances and she accuses him of trying to rape her. Proetus, angry, angry, wants to kill Bellerophon, but he's afraid that as his guest to do so would be a violation of Xenia. And so rather than kill him, he sends him to his father-in-law, Iobates, with the instructions to kill him. They enjoy each other's company for nine days before Iobates finally opens the letter from Proitas. Hesitate to kill a guest directly, he sets Bellerophon, let me say it again, hesitant to kill a guest directly, he sets Bellerophon on an impossible task. <clears throat> kill the Chimera, a lion, goat, snake monster who, quote, breathed invincible fire, swift foot and strong. She had three heads, one of the fierce-eyed lion, the second of a goat, and the third of a snake at the rear, and the goat in the middle breathing out a great blast of blazing flame. I'm sorry, blazing fire. Bellerophon kills the Chimera and is then sent on two additional tasks for Yavates finally recognizes Bellerophon's divine blood, Poseidon, and he gives him half his kingdom and his daughter, Philone, Philonoe, um, in marriage. In later accounts, is with the help of his half-brother, Pegasus, that he is able to combat Chimera. So um, we actually see that in this version here. We have Bellerophon riding the Chimera, or riding the um, um, Pegasus fighting the Chimera. We'll see Poseidon's role in Nostoi or Returns Home several times um, in several of our later stories. For example, Poseidon refuses to let Odysseus return home after Odysseus harms his son Polyphemus. The Cyclops, or Polyphemus the Cyclops, 
This appears in Homer's Odyssey as one of the biggest and scariest monsters in all of the world. And although he is a Cyclops, he's not of the race of the Cyclopes, but a child of Poseidon. He's not a blacksmith, but a shepherd. And after Odysseus's men come upon him and are upon his home, they help themselves to his cheese and milk. Ret but returning with his flock, Polyphemus is not happy about Odysseus and his men just taking when not offered. This bastardization of the rule of Xenia leads to Polyphemus also shirking his Xenia, and he begins killing and eating Odysseus's men. He does ask Odysseus his name, who in response tells him, Nobody. My name is Nobody. Odysseus, clever as he is, is devising a plan to escape after Polyphemus is asleep. So, once he has had his fill of human, Polyphemus falls asleep. Odysseus's men put their plan to place, sharpening a stake. They ram it through Polyphemus's eye, and he moves, moves the rock, opening his cave to yell for help. Odysseus's men are then able to escape. Forgetting himself and an act of hubris, Odysseus yells to Polyphemus and tells him his name. Polyphemus, cursing Odysseus, prays to his father Poseidon to avenge him. And Odysseus would wander for 10 years before getting to return home after Poseidon on several occasions to prevent him. And last is Proteus, the old man of the sea. He is a shapeshifter who can take on many forms. But here we see him in his mostly anthropomorphic state. Proteus would later help Menelaus and Helen return from home after the Trojan War. In some variations of this story, Proteus actually captures Helen as she impairs the show in Troy and later returns her to Menelaus after the war. Of course, the old man in the sea, um, you can prevent him from sh sh shifting, from um, shape shifting if you can catch him. So to conclude, Poseidon is a very important and powerful god. He occupies several spaces, both above in Olympus and below in the sea. Your biggest takeaway should be that Poseidon, much like his brother Zeus, has several children who will go on to become important heroes. And as, sea god, as a sea god, he is so important, especially for these nostoi, as we will see late time and time again. And with that, I'm going to conclude my lecture. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to message me. You will have a quiz um, over this, um, so please check Moodle for that. And until next time, I'll catch you later.